Hey everybody, my name is Taylor Sparks and welcome to my course Materials Informatics. I'm so excited to teach this course. I'm here at the University of Utah where I'm the Associate Chair of Materials Science and Engineering and Materials Informatics is my research area. This is where I spend the vast majority of the research coming out of my group. So it's a topic that is very near and dear to my heart and I'm so excited to share it with you with this YouTube playlist. Um, and I hope that you'll consider taking my class which will be offered springs uh, at the University of Utah. So what are we gonna cover in this class? What is Materials Informatics? What will be taught in this class? Well, just a brief overview and then in the YouTube list we're gonna dive into the details. But um, in this course, we're gonna talk about what Materials Informatics is uh, why would we care about it? Why should you as a material scientist care about it? We'll talk a brief history of what led to its inception and what is the sort of state of the art right now. Um, and then we're going to dive right into the things that allow materials informatics to function. So we'll talk about data, for example. And under data, we might consider both repositories as well as uh, techniques for wrangling the large amounts of data, right? Different formats that you might find data in. So we'll spend some time talking about that. We're then going to shift gears and talk about the tasks associated with materials informatics, right? So when you take machine learning or data science and you apply it towards materials research, what are the type of tasks that you could be asked to do? Is it regression or is it classification, right? Um, what are the frameworks in which you're going to work? Is it going to be supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised, reinforcement learning, something else, right, that hasn't been discussed? Uh, those, those are things that we're going to talk about. Uh, once we know what the task and the framework is that we're going to utilize, the next thing that we're probably going to have to do is understand what features are. So we'll discuss featureization, right? Featureization, that will include both uh, composition-based, right? We, we call those the composition-based feature vector. But we'll also talk about structure and how you can incorporate crystal or molecular structure, or even um, microstructure as a feature. And then we'll also talk about graph neural networks and how we can start to think about crystal structures or materials as graphs and then use graph neural networks to predict properties. Um, once we've discussed features, we're going to shift gears and talk about the algorithms that can be utilized. So we'll discuss a broad variety of algorithms. So ensemble techniques, linear techniques, nonlinear techniques, uh, support vector machines, deep learning, you know, attention networks, all the above, transformers, all that jazz. We're going to talk about algorithms and do some details uh, and applications there. Uh, then we're going to talk about test training and splitting the best practices and the right ways to go about test training splitting. Um, we're going to talk about visualization, uh, clustering, image segmentation a little bit. Um, we'll talk about the metrics for understanding whether or not your algorithm is functioning um, at its peak performance or whether it can be improved or how you can compare your algorithm with the approach of somebody else. We'll talk about metrics. Um, and then I think we're going to wrap up talking about applications and case studies. Uh, there's been so much interest in materials informatics. Um, it's blowing up as a field, and there's a ton of opportunity to continue to improve. But let's see what's been done so far. So that's what we plan on studying uh, in this YouTube playlist. I hope that you'll follow along, and we'll see you in the next video.